Welcome to another edition of Wolf Talk, live on KBCK. Keeping you up to date on local issues that affect you and your community with live in-studio guests. Wolf Talk, with your host, Randy Lynn Lopper. And I want to thank you for joining me for another edition of Wolf Talk right here on KVCK. I have Sarah Chambers with Wolf Point Schools live in studio with me now. Sarah is uh, rather new to our community, and we want to welcome you to the Wolf Point area. Thank you so much. And you've only been here for a few weeks, and you're already wearing a number of hats. Absolutely. (laughs) Yep. That's how it goes around here. (laughs) It is. Now, you're mostly known as interim principal at Southside School, Sarah. That's correct. Your official title is? I am the new director of curriculum and instructional leadership for the district. Well, great, great. And you are here today to tell us about some really good news that is happening starting on Monday. What's the, what's the biggest thing that you wanted to get out to the public? Yeah, absolutely. We are super excited at Southside to welcome our kindergartners back full time. Um, they are going to be with us from 8.05 a.m., just like all of our other kids, until 3.50 p.m. So we're really excited to get them back in the building. They have been going for half day, but um, we are wanting them to transition and start getting ready for first grade and get everything that they need to know um, and, and some interventions in. So we're excited to have them all day. Awesome. Now, when did when did we switch to the half day? Give us a little bit of background of what happened for folks that maybe don't have kindergartners yeah. in school. Yeah, absolutely. So um, part of moving to half day was part of our COVID B plan. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we had kids that were social distanced, that we were making sure that we were meeting all of our kids needs, but that um, we were also thinking about how to keep them safe. And, you know, um, kindergartners are coming to school many of them for the very first time and they're they tend to get sick a little bit more than everybody else and so we wanted to make sure that we were keeping them safe so we had them on a split schedule some kids came in the morning and then some kids came in the afternoon that way we could service them with all of their most important things um, those phonics the reading and the math Um, but then also get some of that fun stuff in like our specials they were able to see um the PE teacher and the music teacher, they were able to get some quality time in the library and with technology. And so we wanted to make that work. And now that we are able to, uh, we, we've had a lot of time to kind of figure out our systems with the other kids in the building. We're ready to bring those kindergartners back um, for a full day so that we can have them for a little bit longer and then also provide them with some intervention time. Great. Now, I know parents are probably like, oh, yes, my kindergarten's going to be going full time. Or maybe some of them are going to be, I'm going to miss my baby. But (laughs) this is going to be kind of a big change for the kids. You know, it's it's they've been going half days. Uh But what advice would you give to parents and guardians on how to prep the little one for that full day now? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So um, we at Southside have um, had a lot of planning meetings over the last two weeks, um, and we've actually changed our kindergartner schedules to make sure to allow for time. We know that there's going to be a little bit of pushback from kids. They're going to get tired really easily, Mm -hmm. especially those kids that have been there in the morning, right around lunchtime, they're going to be ready for a nap. And the kids who, you know, have come in in the afternoon, it's going to be a little rough for them in the morning. So we've been really thoughtful about planning um, our day out for kids so that they are not going full force all the time. Um, We've made sure to break up our our time, our work time with recess time, um, with a lot of play time so that they are okay with that. I would say to parents, the same thing that we say to um, parents of older school children, um, make sure that they're getting to bed early, especially that first day. Um, They're going to be really tired when they come home. So so let them be tired. Let them be cranky. That's actually normal for five and six year olds. Um, Don't push them to do too much right after school. Give them some time to play outside if you can, if it's not too cold. Um, And uh, just let them express their feelings. There's going to be a couple of kids who say, I don't want to go back and do that tomorrow. (laughs) That's okay. We know that's coming and we're prepared for it. So we have a good team on the ground ready to go for that. Well, and actually, I'm sure once the kids get used to it, they're going to like that because they're with their friends all day. And 
it, you know, everything's spread out a little bit more. They have time for recess. They have time to, to ask their teachers questions right. and do all of that kind of stuff that, you know, kids normally yeah, get to do. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, routine is really big for kids in that um, early education age. And so, like, those fours, five, sixes, even seven-year-olds, um, routine is super important. And so making sure that we stick to a routine at school is going to be key, but also having a routine at home will be good, too. Well, is there anything else going on that you would like to pass along yeah. to the to the community? Absolutely. So, um, Southside actually is having um, a special opt in day on Monday. Um, so, when we are bringing the kindergartners back, we're opening a special opt in day for anybody who's at home who has opted out. Um, just to Southside School, so Northside, Junior High, and the high school will not be participating in this because uh, they have credit recovery that they have to take care of, but um, we have an opportunity to let more of our kids come back and get ready for uh, next year with some increased intervention. So any Southside student is welcome to come back on Monday, March 1st, and we will get them put back in their classes with their teachers um, and be ready to go. So that's super exciting. And then we've also got some community meetings coming up um, at the last board meeting, uh, Ms. Erickson and the principals had brought forth the idea of thinking about um, aligning our schools with the curriculum uh, that matches kids' needs. And so we're thinking about uh, moving to a pre-K-2 model at Southside and then having third through fifth grade at Northside, oh, okay. um, having sixth through eighth grade at the junior high, and then keeping ninth through twelfth at the high school. Um, and so we have had some opportunities to talk to the teachers about that um, and get their feedback. We've had some opportunities to talk to our kids about that and get their feedback. And um, we really want to hear from the community about what they want for their kids. So um, we are really excited that will be coming up soon. We'll be sharing that um, with the community shortly, but it should be coming up in March. Great. And you, you can let us know and we can get the information out to the public Absolutely. as well once you know all the specifics of it. Yeah. Now, you guys have had to wear many hats during this COVID situation and change things just to, you know, to keep the kids safe, to keep the staff and, mm -hmm. and uh, faculty safe. How are you guys doing over there? We're, I think we're doing great. Um, you know, this is uh, only, I think, two or three weeks in for my position, but I have been um, consulting with the school district for over a year and a half. Um, so I was able to kind of uh, be in on the ground, boots on the ground when we were rolling out our COVID plan. Um, I've had the opportunity in my other work to be able to see how other schools are doing with the rolling out of the COVID plans. And I think that um, here at Wolf Point, we've done a really, really great job of managing um, how to keep kids safe, but also learning at the same time. Um, you know, in our school district, kids come first, and um, that is something that we take a lot of pride in. And so making sure that we are uh, ensuring that kids are still learning and getting everything that they need while also keeping them safe has been um, a challenge, but it's one that we have been able to embrace and, and work really hard at and do a good job at, I think. Now, I know there's some parents and guardians out there that are saying, when are we going to get completely back to normal for or whatever the normal is for our schools and, you know, with the kids having to, you know, do things a little differently. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a, a moment when we kind of go back to where we were or do we want to even? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we want, like I said, we want what's best for kids. And I think what's best for kids is being able to learn and to learn with their friends and their peers, um, because we know that kids do learn best when there are other kids around them. They actually learn best from their peers. They learn a lot more from them than they do from us as teachers. Um, and so, you know, we want them to get back to that place. I think one thing that I would say is, you know, if we can all get vaccinated, that would be a, a lot easier for us to get back to normal. Um, and that's my personal opinion, not the opinion of the district. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do think that that will help. I do think we are taking steps to move towards more normalcy. Um, you know, we do have our 
plastic dividers up in class, but kids are still doing the same learning things that they were doing before. They are using the computers. We're just wiping them down after they use them. They are talking in small group. They are just, just a little plexiglass in between them. They're all playing on the playground. Um, so uh, all of those things are the same. Um, I would encourage if there's any parents who are worried about what does school look like and I want my kid to opt back in, but I'm, I'm still a little nervous, what does that look like? Um, I am happy to have parents come up and see what those classrooms look like so that they can see and, and feel a little bit more assured about what's happening. Um, our lunchrooms are spaced out, so kids are eating and they're spaced out. I think, you know, uh, parents having the opportunity to come and see it with their own eyes may make them feel a little bit better. But we are working towards getting back to more of that normal. I'm not sure if we'll ever go all the way back to how um, we all went to school. And, you know, that may be a good thing. Yeah, you know, we have an opportunity for kids to um, embrace challenges and learn new ways of doing things. And then also for us as educators to uh, learn new ways of teaching kids and, and expound our own boundaries. So... Now, you mentioned the opt-in option for Southside School, which you're yeah. allowing on Monday just for Southside st students that have opted out. What do parents need to do if they want to have their student opt in on Monday? It, what, what do they need to bring? All of that kind of information. Yeah, so if they are a student who is already enrolled in Southside, they just need to bring their child on Monday morning, um, and we are happy to take them and put them in the classroom and teach them all day long. Um, we do have breakfast being served in the morning, and all kids get the opportunity for breakfast, so if they want to come um, at about 7.30, our breakfast starts, and so they'll be able to drop kids off for breakfast, um, and that goes for kindergarten too. We are still serving breakfast in the classroom for kinder but if uh, parents if they want to eat early and parents want to drop them off early that's fine um, but yeah they just if they're already enrolled we already have a classroom for them and they will have their same teacher who's been giving them their packets every week um, so they'll they'll know their teacher and they'll know their friends and they just slide right in perfect so it's easy for parents easy for the kids yeah maybe a little work for the teachers just but <laughs> a little work for us but that's okay it's it's work that we're excited about we're really really happy um, we, we've got a lot of parents who are have stated that they're ready to come back um, and so we're excited about that and we will still be doing the regular opt-in date at the end of the quarter so the first day of the quarter and that's for every school in the district we will still have our opt-in date for that great I believe that's the 29th of March okay perfect Anything else, Sarah, that, that you wanted to pass along to the public about things going on at Southside or the school district, at all, you know, as an entity, I guess you could say? Yeah. Um, no, I think we're, you know, our, your principals are working really, really hard to make sure that kids are learning and um, those leadership teams are um working overtime to make sure things are working for kids. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to teachers. They are the backbone of our district and they have just done so much work. We ask them to do so much and they are always willing to change um, and always willing to pivot really uh, with what's happened this year. And so um, if you see a teacher out in the community, just you know, say hi and thank you because they are the ones that are doing the hard work. Um, and we are just so thankful that they've all been um, so willing to work so hard for our kids. Yeah, because it's the kids that, that matter, really. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Sarah, for joining us today. And I invite you to come back and, and visit with us as uh, new things happen with Southside School and the district itself. Uh, I know Leverty stops in and visits with me ever so often as well. But yeah. we're always well, uh, wa wanting more people to come and talk to us about what's going on just to keep the public informed and and let everybody know what great things are going on within the school district. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'd love to come back. <laughs> great. Perfect. We'll get you signed up. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to get back to music in just a second. Thanks for listening to today's live edition of Wolf Talk on KBCK with Brandy Lynn Lama. Join us again for more community topics and local guests to keep you informed on issues that affect Northeast Montana. Wolf Talk on KBCK.